Okay, guys, here we go. Now, hybrid A, hybrid B, I've got your back. So let's just do this. And I know that you guys have done some of these already. Um, I believe that you can continue to do it. So I'm going to do this in two parts. I'm going to do these properties. We're going to do this sheet, and then I'm going to do the next sheet, okay? So we have properties, one, two, three, four, five, six properties that we're going to talk about today on this page. We're going to do it for addition, and then we're going to do them for, subtract, um, for multiplication. So commutative, it changes the order of the numbers. You guys, I know that you have done this a million times. How many of you have ever rewritten a problem and said, oh, I don't want to do it like that. I would like to do it like this. See how I rewrote, I rewrote it and I wrote the, the three on, I wrote 111 plus 49. I, I switched it around. You guys, if you had um, eight plus 10, and you rewrote it as 10 plus 8. Anytime you change the order, okay? Now you can't change the order in subtraction. You can only change the order in addition and multiplication. How many of you have ever done 3 times 10 and you've wrote it as 10 times 3? Or you've done 14 times 100 and you've rewritten it as 100 times 14? You guys, it's just when you change the order, however you change it, so it's easier for you to multiply. Okay, the associative property. The associative property, that changes the grouping of the numbers. So commutative changes the order the associative property changes the grouping. Now, sometimes you guys, they'll intermingle these, so just make sure you're paying attention to what is actually going on. So for addition, you might have, um, let's say, four plus five plus five, and instead you do four plus five plus five. See how I move the parentheses? So here the parentheses are around 4 plus 5. Now the parentheses are around 5 plus 5. Or you might have done 5 times 4 times, let's say, 2. And you've rewritten it as 5 times 4 times 2. So see, I grouped the 4 and the 5 together, but I wanted to do it with the 4 and the 2. So you guys, just so you know, the parentheses changed. So the parentheses were around 5 times 4 and 4 times 5. Also notice that everything in this problem is addition. Everything in this problem is multiplication. So up here, everything is addition. Here, here, everything is multiplication. You guys, I would be, how I'm teaching you right now is how I would be teaching you if you were sitting right in front of me. Okay? So let's try a different one. What if you did um, 8 plus 9 plus 11? You might want to regroup that as 8 plus 9 plus 11 because 9 plus 11 is a little bit easier for you to add. And on this one, what if we did, um, let's see, 7 times 3 times, um, that's in parentheses, times 10. Well, I would rather do 7 times 3 times 10. Because I can do 3 times 10 in my head. You guys, the deal with these properties are things that make it easier for you to do that mental math. Okay, now identity, the number you can add or multiply another number and it doesn't change the original number. So you guys, let's think about that. What can we add to five so you get five? The identity for addition 
is 0. It doesn't matter. Negative 4 plus 0 equals negative 4. 0 plus 11 equals 11. So anytime you add 0 to something, that's the addition or the additive identity is 0. What do you think the identity for multiplication is? 0. Think about what you can multiply 5 by and you get 5. Did you guys think 1? If you didn't, that's okay. So the multiplicative identity for multiplication is 1. We call it the multiplicative. You can say multiplication. So anytime you multiply a number by 1, you get the same number. So changing the order, changing the grouping, identity, 0 and 1. Inverse. Okay, so... Identity is when you add, you add either zero, you add zero and you get the same thing, or you multiply by one and you get the same thing. Now, inverse. Inverse means that when you add them, you get zero. When you multiply, you get one. So inverses, this time we're gonna, we want zero as our answer. This time we want one. So what would we add to 5 to get 0? Well, the inverse would be the opposite. So when you add the opposites, you get 0. So if I, added, if I asked you what the inverse of 5 was, you would say negative 5. If I asked you what the inverse of negative 4 is, you would say Four. If I asked you what the inverse of 11 is, you would say negative 11. So 5 and negative 5, they're inverses. Now, because they equal 0, you want your inverse for a multiplication to be 1. So if I told you 5, what would be the inverse of 5. Well, in multiplication, it's going to be a fraction. So a whole number would be 5 over 1. So the inverse of 5 would be 1 fifth, and that would equal 1. The inverse of 4 fifths would be 5 fourths. Do you guys see? I'm just flipping the fraction upside down. Or the, in the case of a whole number, I'm just putting 1 on top of that whole number. So Inverse identities are positive and negatives, and inverses for multiplication are reciprocals. That's a fraction flipped upside down. Okay, the property of zero for multiplication. There is no addition. Basically, it's saying if we multiply anything by zero, we are going to get zero. So the property of zero for multiplication, no addition. But what it's saying is, if you multiply anything by zero, you get zero. Multiplication for negative one, that says multiplication. Nothing, nothing um, for addition. Basically, it's saying that if you multiply by negative 1, you get the opposite. So if I multiply 4 times negative 1, I get negative 4. If I multiply 1 half by negative 1, I get negative 1 half. And if I multiply negative 1, I mean, sorry, negative 11 by negative 1, I get positive 11. So it basically is saying that if you multiply by negative 1, you get the opposite. So changing the order, changing the grouping, adding something to 0, getting itself, multiplying by 1, getting itself, adding opposites to get zero, multiplying opposites or inverses, inverses to get one, adding inverses to get zero, 
multiplying inverses to get one, multiplying by zero gives you zero, and multiplying by negative one gives you the opposite. So now what we're going to do is we are going to match examples. Okay. So name the property of each example. What did we do here? We changed the order. 9 plus 7 is 7 plus 9. So this is commutative. D times 4. Look what we did. We changed the order. This is associative. Now, you guys, if you are just writing and you're not taking it in about what we're doing, that's not good. I need you to pay attention. So look at this. F plus 0 equals F. So we did this. We said 5 plus 0 equals 5. So F plus 0 equals 5. This is identity. Because remember, when you add anything to 0, you get itself. Look at this. When we multiply by negative 1, we get the opposite. So I multiply by negative 1. This is, we can abbreviate this, multiplication of negative 1. Hmm. 1 times m equals m. Oh, that's the multiplication identity. Because anytime you multiply by 1, you get 1. Oop, you can't see it. Sorry. What does this look like, you guys? There's a 2. That's the reciprocal of a 2, and it equals 1. This is the multiplication inverse. What did we do here, you guys? What does it look like? Did we, did we change the order? Did you say yes to that answer? Yeah, we changed it, right? N times P and P times N, that's commutative. What does it look like we did here? Ooh, I bet we changed the grouping. What I would do, you guys, is I would try these and then pause and see what we did, okay? I got two, I got one more minute. So, look, I added to zero, I got the same thing. What happens when you add to zero? Identity. These are opposites. When I add opposites, that is inverse. Reciprocals. Inverse again. I multiplied by 1, I got the same thing. Notice I'm pausing because I really would like you to pause and not just copy down what I'm writing. Oh, you guys, look, I'm multiplying by zero. What happens when you multiply by zero? You get zero. Oh, is there a property for that? Yes, multiplication of zero. I multiply by negative 1 and I get negative n. Oh, there's a property for that. That's the last one. That is three times eight times zero. What happened here? Oh, I grouped eight and zero. I regrouped eight and zero. I regrouped. I didn't multiply by zero, get, get zero. I regrouped. What do you think? Regrouping. Associative. And finally, A plus B equals B plus A. What did I do to the left, what did I do to the left side to get the right side? What did I do with the A and the B? Did I change the order? Commutative. Now at any time, 
Make sure you pause and check your answers. Pause and check. Okay, you guys, that's the first page.